Hey you guys, welcome back to Lisa and Company or welcome if it's your first time here. Today we are making three, yes I said three, Dollar Tree tiered trays. Uh-huh, you heard that. But I didn't stop there. I ended up making a whole bunch of teeny tiny DIYs out of Jenga blocks that would fit on those tiered trays. So it's time for me to stop talking. I hope you have some coffee or tea and a comfy place to hang out because this is huge, big. We're gonna be here for a while. Let's get started. I would really appreciate it if you could give this video a like before we get going. We are working with a whole bunch of Dollar Tree items today. I have some plates, some glass candle holders. I have a few candlesticks and bits and pieces from my stash, but we're gonna get into it more as we get started making these. First up, and if you've been with me for a while, you know anytime I make something in blue and white, it is gonna be for my mom. So I am using these two Dollar Tree plates and an old candle holder that came from a tiered tray that sadly didn't survive our last move. So it's gonna get repainted in this beautiful blue and we are gonna get started putting it together. Now, while I start putting this together, I forgot to tell you, this one actually has a lower base. I'm putting this underneath the bottom plate to rise it up a little bit because I want these to all be a little bit different and I was not just going to sandwich a whole bunch of plates and candlesticks together. So you guys know I think raw materials stick better to each other. So I'm just gonna sand off some of the excess spray paint on both of these so that when I put my different glues down, it should hold really well. Well, as usual, I'm going to use my long-term, short-term hold method, which is E6000 and hot glue. Now, I do have this Dollar Tree fix-all, but I haven't used it yet, and I'm reluctant to try it on something that I'm really wanting to have around for a long time. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have used this much, how it worked, what your results were like, because I am curious. Now I think I may have finally made enough tear trays that I got smarter with this one and I put it together in two separate pieces. What I mean by that is I didn't just work from the bottom and stack up. I have such a hard time seeing if I've lined it up straight when I do that. So I'm kind of excited that I thought of this last second, not gonna lie, and it did stack up really straight. So I'm pretty buzzed. Now I think these are some of the prettiest plates Dollar Tree has ever had in, so I do think it makes a gorgeous tiered tray. The best part is my mom has a set of these plates, so I think this tiered tray is going to look so pretty at her house. Next up, this one has kind of a cool story. I made a tiered tray using this large plate when I did my very first ever YouTube video. However, when we moved, it didn't survive. The top plate broke and I had used one of those tall skinny candlesticks from Dollar Tree and that snapped as well. So I decided to hold onto the plate and when I saw them in the dollar store again, I picked up another one. So we're gonna be using these new black ones. I love these, you guys. It was so hard for me to use one to make a tiered tray because I love them just as decor. And we're gonna do a couple of things here. I find that candlestick a little bit short. So we're gonna use this little tiny, I don't know, it's from the office section. So I would call it like a paper clip cup or something like that, but I thought it was really pretty. It was already black, so I didn't have to do anything to it. And I'm gonna stack these up together to make a nice tall tray. Mm -hmm. 
I really love the way this came out. To me, it's the perfect size and I'm actually thinking, okay, I'm torn. This is either staying in the studio or this is gonna go in my bathroom. So I'll let you know what I decide. Now, this one is a little pedestal, and I love the way the finished product looks, but I'm not gonna lie to you, there's a pretty cool fail in here. I am going to speed through that very, very quickly, and we are gonna get to the end before you know it. Now, these containers I bought at Christmas and didn't get around to using, but I love that scalloped edge on it. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I find them flimsy, so I'm not gonna use one, I'm gonna put two together but I want to separate them a little bit so the scallops sort of stack up and I'm going to offset them. And I'm going to do that by using these little furniture feet uh, and gluing them in between, just creating enough of a space. I think that will also make this a little bit more sturdy. Stay tuned. So I had this idea that I would use the Dollar Tree salt and pepper shakers to create a base for this pedestal. Thing was, one was too short, two was too tall, so I decided to use a few of these wood blocks to try and build it up just right. So I attached two together for the bottom, I put one on top, and then I went ahead and I put some beaded edging on it and I painted it with my chalk paint and, 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 and it looked terrible. That's all I'm gonna tell you. I'm not even gonna show you. This was one of those moments where I was just being cheap because I didn't wanna use up one of my Dollar Tree candlesticks because I haven't seen them in the stores for quite a while and you never know with Dollar Tree. Is it coming back? Is it done? You know exactly what I'm talking about, guys. So I did a ton of work. I actually put the most work into this one and then ditched it, painted a glass candlestick and called it a day. So after all that monkeying around, I do love the way this one came together. It's just a tiny little pedestal. I love the little bird and the tiny little candle ring on it and it is perfect for spring. We are finally at the last tiered tray. Now this one is for Izzy and I'll tell you exactly why. I am using just a couple of the dollar store candle plates and this is actually a candlestick I picked up, are you ready? On the side of the road. Not at a thrift store, not at a garage sale. There was a house near me that kept putting out a table and filling it with stuff and every once in a while there was a treasure. So I am just going to attach this between the two plates, but I am going to offset it slightly. And I'm gonna do two things here. I'm gonna offset it and put it upside down. By putting it upside down, I leave more space on that lower plate and I give myself a better gluing surface for the upper plate. And I can also have a little bit more room on the bottom to put a couple of things. What are we putting on this, you ask? Well. Isabel has started collecting plants, plants of every possible shape and size. And I thought this would look really, really cute with a couple of her small succulents or cacti, cactus. No, cacti is right, isn't it? Anyway, I thought that would be perfect for it because it's glass, it doesn't interfere with all the beautiful plants and it gives her a little bit of a riser to put some on.
You guys, make sure you are following us over on Instagram at Lisa and Company DIY, and you'll be able to see when we put this in her bedroom with some plants on it. So pretty cool tier trays. I love that they already have homes, where they're going to. I had ideas when I was making them as to exactly what we would do with them or who would get them. And I love that I was able to reuse a whole bunch of stuff from my stash because seriously, I need to use up stuff in this stash. Now, I did do all of these teeny tiny DIYs in a sped up mode so we wouldn't be here all day and all night. So let's get started on those and I can't wait to see if you like them. You guys, I have so many boxes of these tumbling tower blocks. I have containers of opened ones. I have leftover projects and a couple of things. I wanted to make a bunch of small DIYs for these tiered trays, but I also wanted to use up a ton of these tumbling tower blocks. So stay with me while we get through about three and a half boxes of these. Couple of things you should know. I am using my Dollar Tree square and I'm doing all of these on small pieces of parchment paper so that if any glue leaks out the bottom, I will still be able to get them off. It also is going to enable me to move these as I put them together. Now to put them together, I'm going to be using the tacky glue from the Dollar Tree. And on some of them, I'm gonna be adding a little bit of hot glue as well. This one is going to be a teeny tiny double-sided piece of decor. So I'm doing three blocks, then flipping the blocks 90 degrees, and then starting again. Once I have it painted, I'm going to paint one side and stain the other. I am going to use this really cute laser cut piece. I'm pretty sure I got these at the Dollar Tree, but like a gazillion years ago. And I'm going to, rather than just slap it on there, I'm going to put them on in different ways. So I'm putting it on, gluing it down, and then just using my X-Acto knife to cut it off on the back, then using those leftover pieces to put them in two more places. These will cut easily with a craft knife if you just keep scoring them over and over again. And the best part was we didn't waste any part of this. For the other side, I just put down three paper flowers from Dollar Tree for a perfect spring piece. This one will be another tiny sign and I'm doing this by putting three blocks together and then every three blocks I'm turning at 90 degrees. It's really easy to see better than my explanation. So once I have painted this one, I'm just going to use a little tiny bit of antiquing wax and my new brush just to um, antique the sides a little bit. And then we are gonna use some dollar store stickers and another one of those awesome paper flowers just to finish this off. Oh, I really like this one and I can see myself using this year round in many, many different ways. Are we having fun yet? Okay, so this one is a little bit different. I'm putting these blocks together and I'll just let you watch. And then I'm gonna add four little feet, paint it up and I have made a teeny tiny little riser with a beaded edge for a tiered tray. Now, sometimes I let my things spill off the tiered trays and put it beside. Sometimes I just wanna elevate something on the tiered tray and I thought this was perfect. A whole bunch of tiny tumbling tower blocks for this one and we are making a small tray for the tiered tray. So just follow along so you can see the way that I am putting it together. Then I'm going to paint it, antique it, and add a couple of super cute faux leather handles with the Dollar Tree faux leather ribbon.
Remember how I said I liked that little riser? Well, I am mad about this little tray. Oh my goodness, I am so excited to do some tear tray decorating and this one is there. This one takes 36 tumbling tower blocks put together in groups of six and then stacked up. We are making a set of teeny tiny farmhouse books. Now, once I had put together a bunch of 12, then I used a popsicle stick to divide them up so that there would be a small gap in between. I got them all painted and now I am using this really cute sticker that I got from Dollar Tree. Um, I did try to write on them and it was a bit of a fail. You guys, you know how I am with these farmhouse books and writing on them. Ugh, anyway. I went ahead and put the sticker on them, put a couple of little flowers on top, a little bit of the green and white baker's twine from Dollar Tree, and we have a really cute set of teeny tiny farmhouse books for a tiered tray. Okay, this one I almost abandoned several times, but I'm glad I stuck with it in the end. So basically what I did was just keep putting together three of the tumbling tower blocks and stacked them up until I had a block. Then I painted it blue, then I painted it white, then I sanded it so I could see a little bit more of the blue. And I still wasn't sure, but I decided to keep going because I wanted something that wasn't completely neutral. I wanted something really pretty with blue and white for my mom's tiered tray. So I wrapped it and wrapped it in the blue and white twine, added some greenery, added a flower, and I can honestly say I'm glad I didn't abandon this one. Okay, so this one is my absolute favorite, but it also the most complicated. I have seen people make lanterns like crazy on YouTube with Jenga blocks, and I thought if they can make giant lanterns, I can make a teeny tiny lantern for my tiered tray. Trust me when I tell you this is not complicated. It's just a series of a whole bunch of little mini construction projects that then you put together to create your lantern. I wanted it to be really realistic looking. So on top, I added, I built it up a little bit, um, had to pull out some more blocks because I kept running out and I'm really thrilled with the way it came together. Now to finish it off, I decided to put a little bit of moss with one of the Dollar Tree's teeny tiny tea lights and this one is done. This one was just a super simple frame with a few blocks and then I used one of the planks from the dollar store for the back. To finish it off, I had this really cute black and white buffalo plaid vinyl and I just popped it in the middle, took one of those spring uh, galvanized words, used my antiquing wax on it, a little greenery, a tiny flower, Bob's your uncle, this is cute and done. Okay, you guys, I really hope you enjoyed these tiered trays and you had tons of inspiration because I had a lot of fun making them. And now I can't wait to scatter them throughout my home and get that one over to my mom's right away. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It really helps my channel grow and it lets me know that you're enjoying the content I'm creating for you. Now, this week you're actually getting another video. So like I said, make sure you hit that notification bell so you know exactly when it comes out. That's it for today, you guys. Thank you as always for stopping by Lisa and Company. Bye. Don't forget to check out these other videos. And like I always tell you, join us over on social media so you never miss anything. It's Lisa and Company DIY on Instagram and Lisa and Company on Facebook. Thanks, you guys. See you next time.